Apartment Rentals. This is Aaron speaking. Hello, uh, I have a question. I'm a tenant here at the at the complex. Sure. Um, and, who am I speaking with? Uh, my name is Kevin. I'm Gladys's roommate. Okay. What's up? And well, we had a, a van that crashed into the wall recently. Yes. And um, it damaged my water reservoir in the bedroom. Like so, it's leaking pretty. Okay. It's leaking pretty bad. Like we have the entire bedroom as one giant water reservoir. Okay, um, Kevin, are you home right now? Yeah, but I can't really come to the door because I'm trying to repair this water reservoir. I'm, I'm afraid. Okay, the, well, um, I'm afraid the whole thing's just going to collapse. And I mean, that's like an entire well, room full of water. Okay, Kevin. Um, let me call my facilities and, director and tell him to come over immediately. And if you can't en- enter, then I will have him enter the apartment to check out what's going on okay well, no i don't want him to come in there's there's things around I, I really just don't want him to see what's around here right now but um um hold on one second kevin okay thank you for holding this is melanie how may i help you hello hi so tell me kind of what you're experiencing so there's a whole bunch of water in your apartment yeah well no we have a water reservoir in the apartment it's to help with the electricity because we just oh, like use your own personal one. Yeah, yeah. It's in the bedroom is oh. pretty much the bedroom is completely filled with water, top to bottom, like it's a big plastic tank. But when we had that van crash uh, recently, it put a crack mm-hmm. in the tank, so it's starting to leak out a, ben- a bunch. I follow you. Okay, because okay, okay, okay. I, I the way that um, the person who answered the phone. I think understood it is like it was um, like our hot water tank, if you will. So oh, no, no. This is our own personal tank. We're right. using it to... Oh, we're okay. using it to okay. I, I have a water turbine running. And so pretty much I just... I, I let the water pay for our electricity because our water is yeah, free here. Yeah, Right. So, so that... you have a crack in it. Yeah, and there's a crack in it. So I'm just... Oh. I'm worried it's going to flood all the other apartments. Yeah, me too. Um... How does one fix a water reservoir? I don't know. I've never done anything like this. Okay. Um, um, would you mind if... I, I know when Aaron had asked, you said that you wouldn't want anybody to come over. Would it be okay if I just pop in there, though, for like 30 seconds? Oh, no, no. not Because we have a whole lab set up here in the living room. And uh, Gladys told me not to let anyone see it. I don't know what it's for. You have a lab set up in the living room. Yeah, she's into science. It's weird. I don't know. But I'm... I, I'm told just to watch it, and if a certain thing heats up too much, I have to turn it down. But our, our water reservoir is the real problem because we don't get uh, we get free electricity by running the water constantly in here. Sure, right. You know, we we have like so, we've re, we've rerouted the plumbing from the bathtub into this water reservoir. You've and it, rerouted the plumbing. Yes. Okay. So it, it goes, I'm it, going to say this, and I know Gladys uh, said she doesn't want anybody in there, but. Per the lease agreement, sir, my concern is that if that water reservoir breaks, that entire basement floor, if you will, or the first floor of McPherson will be flooded. Yeah, that would right? suck. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. That would, me- that right. would mess that up would the suck. lab. That'd mess up, that'd completely mess up the lab. That would mess up the lab, too, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we don't want that. Um, but no, I'm no, taking care of it. I've got some Gorilla Glue. I'm kind of gluing, up, glue. all the, yeah, I'm gluing up all the cracks yeah. in, in the, um, the side. Sure. I, I still, though, sir, um, the the concern of something flooding is something that I would consider an emergent situation that allows well, me to enter the apartment at any time. Well, right? I, think, I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn the valve to like drain it all into the bathtub. You're going to drain it all into the bathtub. Yeah, and then I'll refill it after I fix and the then, cracks well, I wouldn't... from the inside. Okay. What time is Gladys coming home? Oh, who knows with her. Okay. Uh, she, huh. She's usually here in the evenings at some point to cook me dinner. To cook you dinner. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, I, what was your first name? I'm really sorry. Oh, my name is Kevin. Kevin. Okay. Yes, I'm her stepson. Uh, you're her stepson. Yep. Okay. So who else is home with you right now, Kevin? Oh, it's just me right now. But I have the door. Um, it's, it's barricaded. So you can't the door really, is barricaded. Yeah, and we changed the locks, too. You can't really come in right now. I'm sorry. It's and just not a good time. And you changed the locks. Yeah, we had to change the locks because uh, we, we let this one guy borrow our key. and. Do we have the, a copy of that key? Okay, so at first that was key. very nice, Kevin. 
Now I'm just starting to get a little frustrated. You can't change the locks without bringing us in a key. Now I'm getting a little bit more irritated because you have something called a water reservoir and a lab. The water reservoir is something that could flood the entire first floor of the apartment building, but I can't get in even well, if it, it does, and you guys aren't at home because I don't have a key. It's not our fault because so that I'm, van crashed into the wall, and it, you know, this is the vibrations the van crashed into the wall cracked it. I know what crashed your <laughs> Yes. So, so, yeah, you know, like the thing, like we're trying to make hydrogen to help power. Uh, trying to make hydrogen. Yeah. Yes. I'm coming over we, there, okay? We can um, sell power. Whether you let me in or not, if not, then I'm going to be calling the, the law enforcement. So no, what, I'll be over what? there in a few No, minutes, you're not. Kevin. You have no rights to do that. And we're, Kevin, we're, I absolutely do. You just told me that an entire water reservoir has the potential of leaking because it's cracked. Well, it is leaking. That water... That's what I'm saying, but I'm using Gorilla Glue to, to seal up the, the cracks, and we're just trying to make gorilla enough power. We, we want to sell power back to the electric cracks. company. You want to sell power back to the electric company? Yes, because we make enough electricity through the water reservoir and through this hyd- I, oh, I hydrogen understand. lab. Yeah, I understand. Right. Um we just have to leave our water running 24 hours a day to go through the reservoir. You have to and, leave the water running 24 hours a day. Yeah, because then it goes through a turbine and everything. We've got it all set up under the under the cabinets and stuff. Right, yeah. Um, okay, all right. So what was the reason for calling if I can't enter your apartment, Kevin? Well, I just, I, I wasn't sure if you guys had any um, suggestions other than gorilla. <laughs> More gorilla glue. Uh, right, so um, I really... I really have to get my maintenance guy in there. I know with the lab in the living room and the, the you know, flame going under the whatever that you don't want me to go in That's there and have the door barricaded. The turbine, yes. Yeah. Does he have a um, hazmat suit of his own? Does he have a hazmat suit? Why would one need a hazmat suit? Now I'm starting to get irritated again, Kevin. Why, why, would, why would one need a hazmat suit to enter your apartment? He doesn't. Okay. He, I, he doesn't. He, I have some. I have somebody at the window, sir. I the will, window. Uh, why don't they use the fucking right door? Back, okay? why, why are they at the window? People come to your okay, window. Have you? Yeah, they're at my window. That's weird. What the fuck? Okay, I'm gonna hang up with you now, Kevin. Hey, he doesn't need the hazmat people... suit. You're, you're just you're making fun of me at this point. You're you're the one, sir, who said, "Do you have a hazmat suit?" You're you're the one who just asked me. No, if I was my asking if if the maintenance suit. guy had a hazmat suit. For what purpose, then, sir? Just don't worry about it. Okay. All right. So don't well, worry. I'm going to hang up with you now, and we're gonna we're gonna take care of this. All right. Okay. Thank well, you. you're not coming over because I don't even have pants on. Life is like a prank call in Roy, New Mexico. Collect calls, ding cars, harassing Walmart customers. Can I take your head, please? Fortunate testing. No stop. Have to pay the stupid bitch fee snowplow. Roy, who that's my name, it's Roy who snowplow. Danger, watch for scammers. I'm the rising corporate manager, and I need your V card for my snowplow. It's every day on PLA, it's snowplow show. Tell your kids to shut the fuck up, snowplow. Show. I'm going to call the final boss now, Snowplow Show. Hello, everybody. You're listening to episode 441 of the Snowplow Show. This is the show where we trick people into thinking that everything they know about the universe and religion and everything else that they've ever believed is incorrect. More on that in a little bit. Today's show is sponsored by Stan Trucker. Thanks, Stan Trucker, for supporting the show on Patreon. Stan Trucker is one of the many people who have gotten to hear the last few hobosodes. I think there's been three hobosodes since the last regular episode. Haven't there? Let's check. Yeah, hobosode 79. I called a lady about painting cats, painting stray cats, told her to cut it out, and I called a guy in a ski resort, and he was very offended when I told him we could smell the weed under the door. And hobosode 80. Oh yeah, number 80. That means everyone got to hear that one. Never mind. Stan Trucker's not special. But if you want to hear a free hobo sode, go to patreon.com slash phone losers and listen to hobo sode number 80 since I release every 10th hobo sode for free. That's the one where I did a lunk alarm and I called a list of numbers and told people that um, they were not liked 
by the mayor, I think, didn't I? I can't really remember what happened on that one. And then Hobosode 81, that was a short one. I basically did my same old shtick of telling people that whatever person does not like them, and people don't want to know when they're not liked. They'd rather just live in ignorance and believe that everybody likes them. And they take it out on me. Also, there's a new Brad's Cactus Shack out, episode 10. I interviewed people in Salina, Ohio, and I discovered that interviewing is a lot like making prank calls, but you're not mean to people. It's kind of interesting. I never knew that. You can hear all of this stuff on the Patreon, or uh, Brad's Cactus Shack is now over on NotLA.com. Oh yeah, there's also a new episode of Mr. Dobelina's World of Prank Calls out over at WorldOfPrankCalls.com. I've been doing a lot of really old requests over on the Hobo Sodes, though. So if you put in any requests like a year or two ago, you might hear those on current Hobo Sodes. I've just been going randomly through old emails and doing requests. It's been kind of fun. I have uh, two bits of exciting news. Exciting news number one is that I finally got my custom URL for the phone show YouTube. It's youtube.com slash the phone show. If you want to go there and listen to old episodes of the phone show, I haven't put any new ones up lately. I need to get back to work on that before I just forget for a few years again. The other exciting news is that I've set up a Kickstarter for the 2018 PLA coin, which means we should have PLA coins like in a couple of months. 2018 PLA coins, and they're going to be just like last year's more or less. The design, uh, Don Fickles, he updated the design just a little bit, but it's basically the same thing. And of course he changed the year to 2018 instead of 2017. He messed around with the spacing of the letters and all that stuff. It looks much better, I think. And you can look at the design, like the old design and the new design, over on kickstarter.com if you want to see that. Just go there and search for Phone Losers of America, or go to the show notes on snowplowshow.com, and there is a link to the Kickstarter. But if you are a Patreon person, if you're doing like 20 bucks or more on Patreon, you don't have to support the Kickstarter. You get one for free. I'll send it to you as soon as the coins are made. And also, if you're any other level on Patreon, and you've given, like over the years, at least $100, that's where I'm going to do the cutoff. As long as you've given $100, then you will get a coin also. Just one coin and a sticker or two. So if you have given that much on Patreon, make sure your address is in there, because I know some of the $5 people don't have their address in the Patreon system because it doesn't ask them for it, because I never mail them stuff usually. So I posted the link to the Kickstarter last night. I posted it on Twitter, and we're already like a third of the way there almost. Like it's at $300. We have to make $1,000 to get the coins made. So I'd say we're going to make it. I'm hoping we'll get to about 1200 That's what I actually need. I just put 1000 on there, but 1200 would be uh, and, you know, much nicer because I think that's what I'm going to actually spend is right around 1200 bucks to get either 400 or 500 coins. I can't remember. One of those things, more than we got last year. And if the Kickstarter does really well, then I'm hoping to, I, I don't know for sure, like I'd really like to make some coins just for the Snowplow Show. Like no mention of phone losers really on it, just a Snowplow Show coin. That'd be kind of cool, I guess. But we'd have to do over 2,000 to get that. I'm not really counting on that happening. But I'm hoping to do something else, like a lapel pin or something, like a PLA logo. I've been wanting to do that forever. I don't know why I haven't done that yet. Those things aren't even that expensive, really. And that would be awesome to have one of those. But we'll figure something out. Maybe we can talk about, you know, what we should do over on the Facebook group or something. But if you're interested in a coin, be sure to support the Kickstarter. I am sure you'll be able to buy a coin after the Kickstarter if you want to just wait, but it's going to be basically the same price, so you may as well just do it now, right? So you can help the Kickstarter reach its goal. Oh, and the end of the Kickstarter, that's going to be on April 1st, and I don't know why I did that. You know, it's like 40 days away. I should have done just 30 days because 40 days means that's 10 extra days. We have to wait until Kickstarter pays me, until I can order the coins. So that was dumb, but whatever. It ends on April 1st. That's the same day that Calls of Mass Confusion begins, so that'll be an exciting day. Giad's been showing us footage, by the way, of the new Calls of Mass Confusion episodes, and they're pretty crazy. It's some funny stuff on there. I can't wait for those to start coming out in another month. Oh yeah, that's another thing. Uh, Calls of Mass Confusion, they have a Patreon now, so I need to put a link to that in the show notes. It's patreon.com slash comc. I'm not sure what comc means, but it's for the Calls of Mass Confusion patreon page if you want to support that that would do g a lot of good he actually puts a lot of money into all of this stuff none of us do we just kind of sit back and watch him do it so that'd be cool if he could recoup some of his money 
We were talking on Discord today about ideas for calls of mass confusion, and Jihad wants to interview people for a job to travel with gypsies, and he's promised that if the Patreon really takes off, he's going to hire actual gypsies to play the gypsies. He's going to let them into his house, let them stay there and do Skype calls with him. It's going to be awesome. I hope that happens. That should be one of his Patreon goals. You need to set that up, Jihad. Make that one of your goals, damn it. Do you think you could play something, you know, like that's just less hobo-y? I don't know. Have his head examined. Yeah, okay. Hi, Chris, this is Chris. Hey, Chris, this is Roy. I'm a tenant here. Hi, Roy. Hey, um, I just needed to let you know that the uh, the news, uh, the nightly news, they're going to be showing up at the apartment tonight, like all of them, like all the stations, I think four of them. They're just going to be uh, doing a live broadcast from our apartment. From your apartment? Yep. So what's all this about? Um, well, you know, like um, in the top of every building here, there's a bunch of attic space up in uh -huh. the roof. Uh, for the past few months, I've been climbing up in those and uh, installing uh, an array of antennas to receive signals from space. And I finally, we finally, uh, you know, received some radio signals from another galaxy. You needed to talk to Linda before you went up into the attic. I know. I should have asked, but I didn't think you guys would let me. So, But, yeah, I put up... Uh, uh, that's exactly why. Roy, what is a good phone number for you so I can have Linda call you back? 420-6969. Uh, she is with somebody right now, but I will have her call you right back. <coughs> I, can, I, can hold. I can hold. Possible. Okay? I, can, I can hold if you want. She's right in the middle of with another client. Yeah, it's okay. I don't mind holding. It's fine. I, I, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm going to be uh, up, up with these antennas. I'm, I'm going to have to go back into the attic and adjust some, make some adjustments on the antenna soon. Okay, so don't do that until you talk to Linda. Okay, but I mean, okay. it, it, it's cool though because, you know, we, we discovered life on other planets, so it doesn't matter, like, really That anymore. is cool. But, okay, can you hold? I'll, I'll get back to you periodically, let you know. Okay, if sure. She's with them. Thank okay, you. hold on, Roy. Okay. And you're in one, 161, correct? Yeah, uh -huh, yep. Okay, hold on. <laughs> She's still with somebody. <laughs> Are you still holding? Oh, yep, yep, I'm here. Okay, hold on. Okay. Hello, Roy. Hello. How are you? Oh, pretty good. How are you doing today? I'm good. So I had to put it out. It's just kind of a, you know, we're trying to get in the habit of getting all of our paperwork done and notate, notated for everybody. So I know that you and I have a an agreement. You've been working to get as much as you can done, and I appreciate that. Oh, the yeah, The communication, sure. always, for sure. Um, just, just keep doing what you've been doing. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Okay, what? Oh, Chris just said something about you're up in the attic. Oh, yeah, so the news is going to be coming tonight because um, I've installed uh, a giant array of antennas in all 13 attic spaces, you know, in all 13 buildings. Uh, okay, hold on, what? Now, wait, what? Uh, so I, I've, I've turned, I, I've turned, I, I basically turned the entire apartment complex into a big receiving station uh, to listen to signals from outer space. Okay. Like, uh, you know, I, the, the, the floor of every single attic is just covered in antenna stuff. It's like PVC pipes and aluminum foil and stuff. Okay. You know, it's, it's not dangerous or anything. It's fine. It's, it's just little antenna receivers. But it covers the floor of every single attic space. I just, okay. Well, this is something that should have been given permission before yeah. you agreed to do this. I only did 13 of the buildings, though. You have already done this to the building? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's done. I, I've been working on this for months. But um, we finally got enough up there that uh, we received some actual 
uh, radio signals from outer space, like from another galaxy. So the, okay. new, the news is going to be here tonight. They're going to do a live broadcast. Okay. We've had it verified with some local scientists already who, con okay. who confirm that they're actual signals from outer space. Okay. Yep. So uh, yeah, it's going to be big news, big news tonight. Okay. Well, we will watch you on the news. Okay. And um, probably the government's going to show up. So, uh, you know, after they see the news broadcast, we haven't told the government yet because we don't want them to suppress, you know, the alien signals Okay. thing. It's a really unique antenna system we've we've set up. No one's ever tried this before. Yeah, I'm not even been sure how I feel about this because again, this is something that should have been um we should have had um previous notice before you entered anybody's attic. Period. Yeah. We just went up there at nighttime. We just used a ladder to go into the the side where the grates are, you know, like the vent things. That that, that I don't even want to know, because honestly, that sounds like it could be considered breaking and entering. Oh, no, because it's just attic space. It's not, it's no big deal. But like on our building, I put a hatch up in the ceiling to get up into the attic. But on the others, um, we just went in through the side. Up, what do you up, mean you put a hatch? You know, a hatch, you know, just a, like a doorway to get up into the attic. That is altering a unit, and that is not acceptable. Right, but we're going to... Like, I mean, it's not that big of a deal when, in the grand scheme of things because we've discovered signals. But from, it is a, a big deal in the grand scheme of you are not the owner of this property and do not I have know. the right to do these things. It looks really good, though. Like, it's professionally done. It's just... Uh, I'm going to have to talk with the owner of the property and find out what we're going to do with this. So okay, well, um, do not include Kirkwood Meadows in your news broadcast whatsoever oh they're gonna know they're gonna know where they're coming to like all the news vans are gonna be here tonight they're gonna be like you know live from kirkwood's meadows and yeah wow because the entire um, the entire the entire complex now is a big receiving station for space and also the scientists are telling me like, like i mean i already knew this but the shingles are dampening the signal they're probably going to make you remove all the shingles off the roofs in the next few weeks this is this is totally like an April Fool's prank, right? No, because it's February. No, I'm I'm completely serious, ma'am. It's just uh it, it's just Who am I know, talking to? This is Roy. From one of my units. Yep. Okay. So All right. I am not even sure what to do with this information. I will get back with you. Okay. Well, the, I mean, the government's going to be involved after tonight's broadcast. They're going to okay. show up. So All right. you, you I will get back with you. you I have to talk with my supervisor. Okay. Well, don't don't be going okay. up in the attics and disconnecting anything because, you know, it's a big night tonight. You had no business to go up there and connect anything to begin with. So I know, but, like, it's out of my hands now because the, the news is going to be involved. It is definitely out of your hands now but, because I am going to talk to my supervisor. Thank okay. you. But, but if you... If if you, if you, dis I guess she's not, not a fan of <laughs> astronomy or something. So I don't know where that, the initial lady, where did, where did she get apartment 161? There must be an actual Roy living in 161. Because I told them a completely different apartment number based on what I found on white pages. And would 161 even be on a top floor? It seems like that would be a lower floor. It looks like this is a two-story place. I'm going to call them one more time. Oh, hey, um, I just, can you let that lady know that uh, I've put alarms up in all of the attic spaces, so if she goes up there, I'll know. Like, uh, I've got an alarm system set up in every building. Roy, Roy. What? Well, she... Would you like to talk to Linda and not threaten? No, no, I'm not threatening. I'm just saying I'll know if she goes up there. It's I've got. That little... is a threat. No, it's not a threat. It's just, I'm just saying. Hold, I'll, on. My, Hold on. My thing will beep here. How is that a threat? Roy. Yeah. Uh -huh, yep. She's calling our boss, and he will he will take it to the next level. Okay. Okay. Well, j just you know, tell the boss not to go up in the in the attic space because there's an alarm. Tell us what we can do and cannot do on our own property. Yeah, but th this is bigger than all of us. This is. Uh, this is not bigger than all of us. This is Kirkwood no, Meadows, kinda, and it's a business. Well, Ma'am, listen. Do you do you want to hear the radio signal? Like this. This is music. Roy. This is music Roy. from. <laughs> Outer space. We are running a business on Earth right now, okay? But don't you get how important this our, is? Our our supervisor will give you a call. All right, okay, bye bye. Like, I really should have given her a real phone number instead of my fake phone number. Should have given her a number where they could call me back. 
stupid me, because that sounds like fun. Talk to the big boss. Holy crap, I just noticed there are reviews on this place on Google. There's 18 reviews. It just shows three of them, though. Seems like it's mostly one-star reviews, but uh, review number one. At first, this place looked uh, habitable, but soon we realized how we were scammed. Number two says management shows favoritism and discrimination when writing tenants up. And number three is do not waste your time or money. Oh my god, I want to read the rest of these now. <laughs> Electric bill was extremely high for a small one-bedroom apartment. Yeah, probably because of my antenna array. You know, it generates a lot of heat, puts it down in your apartment, because that's the direction the heat travels, you know. After moving out because property management would never fix anything, they charged us for an unreal amount of damages that were never there. That's why you should take video and photos when you move out of a place. Stupid, stupid you. Holy crap, these are all bad reviews. It's probably just shitty tenants. They're mad because, you know, they had to follow the rules or whatever. So they're like, I know what I'll do. I'll write a shitty review on their apartment page. That'll teach them. It's a great day out. This is Cardine. How may I help you? Hey there, this is Roy. I'm a tenant here at a place. Hi, Roy. Hi. Hey, what um, can I do for you? I needed to let you know there's going to be a news crew showing up here tonight. Um, they're going to be uh, broadcasting out of our apartment. And okay. I'm, I'm just letting for... you know so you're not concerned about anything. Everything's oh, okay. Fine. What, what apartment are you in? I'm um, in um, H102. Okay. And can I ask what it's about? Or um, Well, um, so you know the attic space in, in all the uh, the buildings? Uh-huh. I've been climbing up in all of those for these past few months, and I've converted them all into big antennas to listen to radio signals from space. And uh, I've, we, we were finally able, just a couple weeks ago, to finally uh, tune in some actual radio signals from deep space, like alien radio really? stations. Yeah. Okay, Roy, can you hold on one second? Okay, sure. Thank you. Roy? Yeah? Okay, I, I'm Carlene. I'm sitting here with my assistant, Maddie. Can you, can you tell me again what's going on? You've got a newscast station coming tonight. Yeah, they're going to be listening to uh, our live. Like every night, there's like a window of about two hours. We're able to uh, pull in signals from a distant galaxy through this array of antennas I've installed inside of the, the, um, the attic space of every building. Well, only seven buildings here on the property. And so, huh? so you've been in seven, seven buildings, attics? Yeah, yeah, we just, just the attic space, that's all. Because I had to install all these uh, antennas, these homemade antennas that I made. And, and, that... and Roy, you're in H102, right? Correct, yeah. Okay, I'm just wondering how you got in the attics of each building. Oh, there's a like, little ventilation shaft thing on the side, you know? Just kind of crawled through there. No big deal, really. Why would you do yeah. that? Uh, to install these antennas. Because I, I had to put antennas in every single building. It's like an array of antennas, and they all work together. And, and yeah, that, that, that's well, how I was able to pull in these radio signals. from. Um, what? What, she okay, want? so, Roy, you, you said you're in H102. Are you on the lease? Oh, probably not. I don't think they ever put me on there. I'm just kind of, I'm just the roommate. Okay, you're the roommate there. All right. Yep. Well, the reason, the reason, and I really appreciate you letting me know what's going on. Mm -hmm. it, unfortunately, that is not something that we approve. I know, I know. I should have asked, but I figured if I asked, you guys would have said no. Yeah, yeah, like you're you're not a leaseholder number 1 and number 2 we we don't allow people putting antennas in the crawl spaces. Yeah, but they're not like real they're they're not standard antennas. They're they're like homemade antennas. I made them myself. Um it's, yeah, it's like a unique Yeah, even even that it's just it's just something that we don't allow. What what See, buildings are they in? Um like all of the ones around the pool area, like, you know, like all seven. There's seven buildings, right? Around the pool, okay. Yeah, the pool, the little lake pond thing. Because I needed to, to be in, in that configuration. Like, that's why uh, I moved here in the first place. 
is because it seemed like the perfect place to install my antenna array so I could listen to space. And I was right. It worked. But you want to hear a, a, an actual alien song? Are, uh, are, you, is, are you being honest with me? <laughs> of course. Yeah, I wouldn't kid around about this. This is huge news. It's going to be big after the broadcast tonight. Probably the government's going to show up in, in the coming weeks. Who, um, who, who are you living with in H-102? Uh, Jennifer. Yeah, I don't, I don't even have a Jennifer in that apartment. Are, you know, are you trying to call place apartments? Yeah, yeah, definitely, here on <laughs> Avenue. Are you at the property right now? Yep. I would love for you to come down and meet with me and tell me all about this. Okay, well, I'm, I'm busy, and I'm also taken. Me and Jennifer are an item, so I'm not interested in anything further than Thanks. just a business relationship with you. <laughs> well, the way she said it, come on. You could tell she wanted me. I had, I had to set things straight right away. I don't want to have to be like one of those hashtag me too people. Nobody wants to hear my alien music. This is bullshit. But you know what, you guys, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm done with these apartment calls. I'm going to play the alien music for you because, you know, you, you guys want to hear it, right? I, I worked hard on this. You got the static. <laughs> Put an echo on it. This is the, uh, the party time song. I, I reversed it. <laughs> That's my alien music. Sounds very alien, doesn't it? Yeah, I guess I am finished for now with uh, alien antenna, whatever, calls for apartments. I've done quite a few of these today. Nobody really bought it. Everyone thinks I'm full of shit for some reason. They just can't wrap their heads around signals from space, changing everything we know about the universe, probably upsetting religious communities. They're going to come and like set the whole complex on fire because they can't handle it. Oh man, now I want to make more calls so I can I can put that fear into their heads. But no, nope, I'm done. I'm done for now. Here's a prank request from Mike. He says, someone left a note for FedEx slash UPS, not specified, to the entrance of the lofts that I live in. The note says, if there is a package for Nicholas G, please call. And it has the phone number here. And Mike gives me his address and wants me to tell them that their package was lost or they're blacklisted for being rude or not tipping the delivery man or shipping drugs. Let's see if these people will pick up. Hello. Hi, is Nicholas Brown? This is Steve Dave from FedEx. <laughs> Pardon me? This is Steve Dave from FedEx. I'm calling for okay. Nic Nicholas. Um, for what? Uh, well, we had a delivery for him, and uh, nobody was here. He had a, a note up here saying we should give him a call if, if he wasn't there for the delivery. And he's got a... To where? It, it's hard to hear you with all those people. Um, it's at 4244. I don't know. What? You don't know what? I don't know. You don't know what? What part don't you know? Who gave you this number? Nicholas did. Do you not know Nicholas? Did I get the wrong place? Um, well, that's my ex like a year ago. Oh, no, he left this today. He left this today. Yep, and there's this box here. I don't know if you're able to come over and sign for it, but it's, uh, there, there's, uh... Is this in St. Louis? Yeah, yep. And th yeah, there, there's... Yeah, I haven't lived there for a year. This is um, apparently a box what, full of do you know? ticks. Like, you know, the little bugs, ticks, because it's leaking, and there are ticks everywhere. So, well, shit. She doesn't want anything to do with, with Nicholas and his box of ticks. I don't blame her for breaking up with Nicholas. He's like, hey, can't get to my phone right now. Yeah. Please leave a message. Nice message. Damn it, Lexi. Oh, and look at this on her Facebook. She's got a picture of her and her brand new boyfriend, her Nicholas 2.0. It looks like we get a, a new one every month of Nicholas 2.0. And since Mike uh, referred to another one, I checked my prank requests. And I don't think he realized it, but the other one was actually that Lexi girl. It was the same phone number, basically. 
I was hoping I could try another one of those, but nope, I guess not. Thanks for the submission, Mike. Here's a request from Kid Loves the Flitches. He wants me to call a GameStop, and he says, Hey, Brad, it's Kid that the the switches. Can you call this GameStop and tell them and tell them, Holy crap, Kid that loves the whatever, like, stop smoking weed. It makes you unable to write sentences. Uh, tell them you're a employee and you were smoking weed and you fell asleep in the back and you're locked out if you can. If you can't, you do your own idea. Thanks, Brad. Love you. Okay, let's give this a try. Thank you for calling GameStop where you can pre-order Far Cry 5. This is Caitlin. How can I help you? Hey, Caitlin. I called earlier about the customer survey. Do you have a customer in there yet that could do the weekly survey? Yeah, um, so I don't, is there somewhere that I can read information about this? We told our store leader, and he said that this sounds like a scam, so. <laughs> oh, no, it's not a scam. I'm just calling from the corporate office, and we we do this about once a week to locations in the area. It's just a quick survey. Okay, give me one second, okay? Okay. All right, I got somebody that would be willing to do your survey, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay, hold on one sec. Uh, hello? Hi, is this the customer? Yeah. Okay, here's the thing. My name is Chad. I actually work there. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't want to get in trouble. I've, I've accidentally locked myself out. Can you see where the back room is? I need you to come and open the door for me. Um, Just, I don't think I can do that. Oh, no, it's cool. It's cool because you're on the phone. They think it's a survey. Everything's fine. Like, did they give you the cordless phone? Okay, just start walking toward the back. Just don't even look at him. Just walk into the back room. It's cool. Uh, I'm not going to do that. No, I'll explain it to them if, if, they, if they try to tackle you or anything. I just need you to open the door. I'm locked out. You'll hear me knocking. Um, I, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> no, no, come on. You've never seen the back room of a GameStop before, right? Like, this will be your chance to see the back room of a GameStop. No, that's okay. No, it's, come on, it's cool. It's fine. It's, oh, and she hung up. That's not something customers are allowed to do. Yeah, so I tried to call them earlier, and there was no customers in there, so I waited like 30 minutes, and then I called back. That's why the call started out like that. And I don't, do they even have a back door in the back of a GameStop? I, I guess it depends on the GameStop. Man, that customer was just not up for any adventure at all, though. How often do you get a chance to, to do something stealthy like that? stealthy and exciting secretly help out an employee but i just don't understand this request though like if i tell them i'm an employee like aren't they gonna know that i'm not an employee they've got to all know each other there game stops aren't that big it's not like a walmart maybe i'm missing something though here let's try it at a different game stop let's see how well it works somewhere else good afternoon thank you for calling my game stop where you can still pre-order your copy of nino kuni 2 and pay for it with your trades this is jenna speaking how may i assist you hey jenna it's chad i'm supposed to start working there tonight and there's a problem you are yeah there's a problem there's a lot of problems i have no idea about this what's going on oh, okay smart ass no i'm at the back door like right now you know the back door uh-huh in the back I i'm locked out uh, I know I probably shouldn't have, but I, I, I smoked a joint before I, I was supposed to come in. Who is this? Uh, this is Chad. I'm supposed to start tonight. No. Yeah, huh? On no. Co Cooper Point Road. Yeah, no. Who no. is this actually? Th this is Chad. Like, why, would, why won't you believe me? Just let me in, okay? No. Because I, I, I want to get paid. Okay. Okay, so who is this actually? Well, who are you? I am the assistant store manager of the store and have no knowledge of Chad or Stoner working here. Oh, you're only the assistant, so you wouldn't know. Oh, no, I wouldn't know. Nope, you wouldn't. I agree. Okay, I have, I have this guy, Chad. He's supposed to work here tonight. He's at the back door right now. He just smoked a joint, but he wants to get on the ship. Tell him to go answer the door. This is fun. It's not fun for me. It's fucking cold out here, lady. Check our policy on how high you have to be to work here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna double check the policy. We're gonna we're gonna make sure you're 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 high enough to work here. I'd appreciate it. Hurry up. It's cold. Yeah. No. Actually, do you mind meeting me at the front door? Nope. 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 I don't do that. You don't do front door. That, that's against my policy. Uh, if you know what I mean. I 
<laughs> wink, well, wink. Not, well, we don't do back doors, so... That's not what I heard, lady. Oh, that's unfortunate. Well, I hope Is you it? have a wonderful day. Uh, don't stay on the cold too long, but you're definitely not coming into the back door. I'm fine. I'll just go to the next door or something. Yeah, okay, whatever. See? See? What, what do you think's going to happen? This is going to happen every time. I wonder if they have private restrooms in GameStop. I can just say I'm locked in the restroom. Thank you for calling Lace GameStop. But the more you trade, the more you save. This is Daniel speaking. How can I help you? Hey, I'm locked in your, your bathroom in the back. Can, can you open the bathroom for me? Um, no. Why not? Because you're not here, because I was just there. Uh, no, I was in the ceiling tiles. If I jumped Bye. down and now I can't climb back up. Okay, so they have bathrooms, or some of them do at least. I should have asked him if he did number one or number two. Thank you for calling GameStop here at Fort Lewis, where we have Xbox One X is in stock. This is Faith. How can I help you? Hey, Faith, this is Chad. I'm one of the employees, the new people. And hey, what's up? hey, I'm locked in the bathroom. Can you come and unlock the door? Does it unlock? You're locked in the bathroom? Yeah, in the, in the back. It, 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 does it unlock from the outside? Wait, you're in our store? Yeah, yeah, I'm in the store right now. I just, uh, I, I came in here to have a quick smoke, and now it, the, the door won't open. Wait, the back, back, bit, like in the building building? Yes, like by, yeah, the bathroom. By clothing and cells? Yeah, yeah, the bathroom, I, the GameStop bathroom here on Liggett. We don't have a bathroom in our, in our, um, build, in our store. Oh, bathroom. crud. What is this, like a, a storage room? I just pooped on the floor then. Oh, I'm my so, God. <laughs> I'm so sorry. We don't have a bathroom in here. Yeah, you, we you do now. No, we don't now. Yeah, someone's going to have to clean this up. I'm not doing it. All righty. All right. I'll call someone from Macy's. Okay, do that. All righty. Bye, honey. <laughs> Anything else for you? No, that's why I said bye. Hang up the phone. Okay, bye. <laughs> People at GameStop are so friendly. But yeah, anyway, a kid that loves the flitches. I hate your idea. Don't ever write me again. Here's a request from Billman. Uh, he sent this back in September of 2017. And this is a Facebook post that he captured off of his phone. It's by someone named Cammy, And it says, This number is for my close friends only, as I cannot check Messenger. And has her phone number on there. That's the post she made on Facebook. And then this guy named Mike Albright says, Please, no one but close friends take this number down. LOL, you're goofy. So I don't know if she's trying to be funny. I don't think she is. Mike's just calling her an idiot, basically. Hello. Hi, Cammy. Hi. Hey there. Uh, this is Steve Dave from the Walmart. I've got a Mike Albright here. Uh, he, he's trying to get employed here, and he, he put you down as a reference. Do you know Mike Albright? Oh. Okay, yes, I do. Yep, he's from Jamestown, yep. Okay, yeah, and uh, he says here that you and him are married uh, three years now? Uh, yep, that's correct. Okay, and um, it looks like you both worked at the same job previously at the weed shop? I did what? The marijuana shop. You guys worked previously together at the marijuana shop? No, no. But you, Actually, I've just been answering your, your questions because uh, I thought he was trying to get a good reference. But Oh, yeah. No, he, he is trying to get a good reference. Are you saying that you didn't work together at the weed shop previously? I've never worked at any kind of a weed shop before. Oh. Well, why would he say this if he's your husband? I don't know. He's um he's not my, my husband. I just said yes to... Help him, I guess. I don't know. I'm sorry. Oh, my gosh. You're lying for him. This does not look good for him. Wait, why would he write... Job at, this is for a job at Walmart? Yeah, why would he write this on an application if it's not true? It doesn't make sense. Well, why would he even put on an application that he wants to work at a weed shop when he's trying to get a different job anyway? Well, no, he previously worked that's at the weed shop. Mike, that's nothing like Albrecht. I know. I know what Mike Albrecht. I don't know. He's on a full league team. Mixed couples league, and he's just a good guy. Yeah. Oh, there's so. nothing wrong with I can't help you. working at a. Weed I can't help you with your questions. Okay? Well, hey, you don't have to be a jerk about. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I don't know if I messed that one up or not. I want to try her back one more time. I'll just come clean with her, I guess. 
Hello? Okay, Cami, I'm going to come clean with you. I'm not really with Walmart. I just saw that you posted on Facebook um, that, you know, you put your phone number okay. up there for close friends, and I don't know, I just thought we could be close friends. But you won't even accept my friend request. What's your name? Uh, my name is Steve Dave, and I friend requested you like three times now, and you keep clicking no. I don't understand why. I mean, where are you from? I'm from Canada. Just, is your name on there? Uh, Steve Dave. I just want to be Facebook friends, though. You know, it's not, not a big deal. Yeah. Okay. You, you wrote this numbers well, for my close friends only, and you put your phone number on there. So I'm calling you. That was like a couple years ago. Here. No, no. It, it was like not even a year ago. It was like six months ago. Well, what's your obsession? Like, what's your trip? I don't get it. Well, you, I don't know. You said you wanted close friends. Hey, can you tell that guy in the background to shut up? Like, who's that? Who, who, who's, who are you with? Is this a joke? No, it's not a joke. Just tell him to be quiet. Tell him it's rude to be talking while you're on the phone. <laughs> okay, that was stupid. I was hoping he'd get on the phone and have a word with me. Hello? Hi, Sharon. Yeah? Hey, this is Roy. I'm with the Snowplow Show podcast. And we're doing the story on people who've received prank calls. And we got your number from an old prank call we found on the internet. I was wondering if you'd want to just talk about it real quick, about this old call that you received back in the, it looks like the late 90s or early 2000s. Uh, it, appear, it, it appears you're... Uh, that was Sharon. Sharon Ray, you guys. She finally picked up. That was the uh, AOL lady that not Brad wanted to hear a call from where he's accusing me of being involved in that call where they convince her to delete her hard drive. And I have been trying to call her for a couple weeks now, and she never picks up. That's the first time she's ever picked up for me, and I guess that's probably the last time she will ever pick up. So I'm giving up. I'm not going to try and call Sharon Ray anymore. Or here, let's try and call her one last time. Maybe she'll pick up. I kind of doubt it, though. I don't know what I was going to ask her anyway. I mean, <laughs> wasn't that funny when you deleted all your stuff? Teehee. Can you tell me you've been owned by Freak Radio? Sharon Ray. Yep. Leave your message. Straight to voicemail. She's never going to pick up again. I'm deleting her number. I tried. I wanted to ask her about that call, but I guess it's just not going to happen. Hopefully you guys remember what I'm talking about. It's from a few shows ago. I give up on prank calls. Let's listen to someone else's before we end the show. I've got one here from Ruprecht, the monkey boy. We haven't heard from him in a while. What the hell, Ruprecht? Did you finally move on? Stop listening to this show? This is something he sent in back in November of last year, and I skimmed through it. It's him using a soundboard of my voice saying, hang up the phone to piss off some guy. It's eight minutes long. I'm, I'm probably going to cut it down a little bit, unless it's just completely amazing. Oh, and maybe it's not him, because in this email it says, okay, my friend Sickle Sal Anemia used this soundboard months ago. And yeah, okay, here, let's just play it. Hello? Hang up the phone. What? What? I told you to hang up the phone. I said hang up what? the phone. I said hang up the phone. You hang I'm up the phone. Up shit. It's like, are you a person? Quit asking questions and hang up. Well, it sounds like he knows it's, it's no. you know, not real. You hang up. If Maybe. you don't want me asking you questions, you hang up. Just hang up the phone and this will all be over. You called my house, so evidently it's not over. So I say it's over. Hang up your phone. And is there a hang up the no. phone soundboard somewhere? I forget about this if that exists. Where's that at? You better hang it up. And if I don't hang it up, what the hell are you going to do? You're too scared to hang up. I'm too scared to hang up? No, I'm smart you. enough to know that you're calling from Atlanta. Hang up the fucking phone, motherfucker. Smart You hang up the phone yourself. Probably said it on his phone. I don't have to hang if you up. Had, if, if you had any balls, you'd talk to me in person. I'm pretty sure I'm right. You're going to hang up that phone. I'm pretty sure you're wrong. I'm not hanging up the phone. You hang up your end, bitch. Just hang up the goddamn phone. No. I'm not playing around. <laughs> what are you going to do? Hurt me? Hang it up. I'm not playing around. I'm still here. You, you'll hang it up eventually. He's showing you. Yeah, when well, my phone died, but other than that, we can play this game all day. Okay. So I've got time. You got time? Yeah. 
Okay. okay. Well, I'm driving, so you let me know when you want to talk. Okay. Yeah, this is great. Good stuff here. I'm enjoying this. I'm talking to you, motherfucker. Yeah. Hang up your fucking phone. Nope, you first. I'm talking to you, motherfucker. The phone's not a toy. Well, neither is making a phone call to my house again. I don't care. Just hang up the phone. I thought he was driving. How's this his house? No, you hang up your phone. You better hang it up, you big dumb retard. Hang it up. Whoa, Brad, not cool. Using the R word. Come on. Do it. I would never How do that. How old are you? Don't worry about it. Just hang up the phone. Evidently, you're not very old because you speak like a retard. Whoa. You better hang it up. Using the R word makes people use the R word, I've noticed. Hey, it's none of your business. Just hang up the phone. Okay, the longer I got you on the phone, the easier it is for the cops to track you. Do it. So you like living in Atlanta? Just hang up the phone and this will all be over. No, you hang up your phone and it will all be over. No, I want you to hang it up. I want you to hang it up. Hang it up. You hang it up. Do it. Compelling stuff, you, you guys. You do it. I said hang up the phone. Only uh, no, I don't want four to. minutes left. I'll hang it up for you. It'll all be over. Okay, well, hang it up for me then. No, you're going to. You, you better hang up that phone. I ain't hanging up shit. Hey. You better hang it up. That's my line. Are you going to hurt me if I don't? You stupid dick face. Well, why don't you hang it up then? Are you upset because Atlanta lost the fucking game? You, you'll hang it up eventually. Sick burn. Yeah, when my phone runs out of battery, I guess it'll hang up. Unless I plug it back in. Hang up the motherfucking phone. I don't want to. You hang up your phone. Hang up the fucking phone, motherfucker. I don't want to hang up the phone, motherfucker. I hope you don't ever hang up the phone. Well, I might not. Okay. If I don't hang up, if I don't hang up the phone, you won't be able to call nobody now, will you? Good. Just don't hang up then. See if I care. Okay. Well, then why do you keep talking? I like how he's trying so hard you to outsmart a recording. Phone. That's awesome. There's a bunch you of. You better hang it up, you big dumb retard. There's a bunch of long pauses in here. I'm gonna delete those, edit those out, make this a little bit shorter for you guys, so you don't have to suffer like I am. Still here. Put the phone down. What are you doing? Release the line. Terminate the call. Why don't you hang up the phone? Why would you just sit here and listen to this? Do you need your diaper changed? Good one. I don't know who the fuck you are. Just hang up the phone. Can you say more words than hang up the fucking phone? Who are you? <laughs> Repeat that. I, I didn't hear it. Sound like you had something stuck in your throat. Well, why don't you hang it up then? Because I'm trying to see if you're past the first grade. <laughs> Good one. Yes. Doesn't sound like it. You don't have a very big vocabulary. <laughs> vocabulary? Do you know Aunt your Mama? Quit asking questions and hang up. Watch out. Damn motherfucker. And he hung up the phone. Ruprecht wins. Good job, Ruprecht. You had to kill him to do it, but you won. He hung up the phone as he died. Now, he mentioned that to me in the email. He's like, at the end of the call, you can clearly hear him swear and sound as if he gets into a wreck. No worries, though. Sickle calls him back just to hear his voice and verify that he's okay. And I don't know. We don't really have to play that, do we? Am I going to play that? I guess I am because I'm doing it. Hello? And he doesn't say anything. Hello? Here. He just doesn't say anything. JB, come here. Should have told him to hang up the phone again. You know, really piss him off after he almost died. I want to know where the soundboard is, though, that has me telling people to hang up the phone. 
That needs to be something that more people can use and we can add sound clips to. So where is it, Ruprek? Brad, it's not Brad. Hey. Um, okay, you're right. You don't really sound like that chick uh, yeah, in that prank call. Uh, or the guy. You had me going there. Um, but if you do get through to her, you should tell her that you were exploring the internet and you accidentally downloaded her files and they must have been floating around in hyperspace since uh, since she deleted them off her computer. In cyberspace. Um, all right, Brad. Good luck out there. Uh, bring back the phone show. And I'm sure you heard by now. It didn't work out. She's never going to pick up her phone again. Hey, Brad. It's Olga. Hey, Olga. Hey, King, King Richard, Richard. and I just got done whispering sweet nothings to each other. And we have some Yo Mama jokes for oh, you. Yay. Here they are. I can't wait. Yo Mama's so stupid, she tried to eat her iPhone because it had an apple on it. Ah, ha, ha. Yo Mama's so fat, she has to upgrade her data plan every time she sends a selfie. Ah, Yo ah. Mama's so dirty that I had phone sex with her and got an ear infection. You know my mom's dead, right? Yo mama so stupid. This is not cool. She got lost in the telephone booth. Not cool, you guys. <laughs> okay. Oh, crap. I didn't hear that so, one. Yo mama so stupid. She got lost in the telephone booth. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. Bye, Olga and King Richard. Your voicemails are disgusting. Please hey, Brad. Stop. It's Billy A, a.k.a. Deadly Pliers from Discord. Uh, hey. I just was listening to Hobosode 77 and heard you talking about a corrupt hard drive, uh, you might want to try a program called Spinrite. I did. Uh, it's like $40 or something, but it's, it's helped right. me recover data. Or it's free if you get it from a torrent. From a bunch of people's Maybe that's why it didn't work for me. Drives that have been corrupted before, so maybe it'll work for you. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for the shows, and good luck. Goodbye. Uh, yeah, I tried Spinrite a while back. It didn't work. I got the other hard drive from Amazon that's the uh, exact same hard drive as the one that's broken. I swapped the circuit boards around. It didn't do anything. Someone told me that wouldn't work because the circuit boards are linked to the, the reader head things, but it didn't change anything. It seems like something would have changed if I did that, and it was just a issue with them not working together. Maybe. I don't know. So my next step is to try and change the, the whole arm thing with the reader heads on it. I don't know the terminology. I looked at a few YouTube videos. Some people are using special tools and stuff. Some people aren't. I'm going to try and swap the heads out, see if that works. If that doesn't work, I'm going to swap the platters next. And if that doesn't work, I give up. I've lost a bunch of data. It's a bummer, but whatever. It's happened before. Hey, Brad. It's Chaz, the tendon stacker. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to let you know that I think your hold music is great, and you really haven't oh, used it you. as much as you should. From the first time I heard you put that pussy song on as hold music I am just shocked no one picked up on it yeah. you need to do a not a single person I don't think has said anything about that maybe I need to leave it running for a long time let it really sink in <laughs> that they're hearing it's that show where you actually call people up find a reason to put them on hold put that song on while we listen to their reaction someone sooner or later is going to hear it and it's going to be great have a great one cactus cactus all right, thanks for calling from the bar, Mr. Tandem Stacker. Hey, Brad, I'm just calling to let you know you need to make more phone calls, not upload them quicker. Okay. You know what people that are telling you that you're uploading too many peeps, I guess, but yeah. Whatever. Need more shows. Okay. Brad, this is incredulous. The apartment complex portal calls, yes. those are the funniest things you've ever done. Seriously, oh, you've yes. got to do it again. Just Thanks. don't give up on it and not do it again because it's so funny. I even told my friends about you it. You know, that was Simplex's idea. Simplex from the Discord room. So you should thank him. He had the idea to do the portals. I think it's a great idea. I need to do it again. And soon. they laugh just like secondhand retelling of your calls. So do it again. I no will. excuses. I promise. Cactus. Hey, Brad. Crazy Calvin. Hey. Just want to let you know that I got you some uh, free advertising. Oh, great. So when I do? go to a store or the bank and I get change, on every $1 bill that I have on the back in blue pen, I write, Obey the Cactus, phonelosers.com. That's great. And um, it's going to get the I FBI over here again. I'd like my school vending machine or facing government stuff, property. Or uh, when I'm shopping. So because of this, there's probably about 35 or 40 of these uh, PLA dollars in circulation somewhere now. So um, 
Just figure I'd let you know in case you ever get one. That's yep, great. That's because of me. Thanks, Crazy Yay. Calvin. So, do I get the hobosodes now? Cactus, cactus? Nope. You don't. Quit acting like I'm nice and stuff. Hey, Brad, it's your Uncle Danny. I'm in the rant window. We finally got one of the shows. And I'm just going to be really proud of you. I am. Right. Uncle Benny. We're the family business, but you know, it's all right. Keep doing what you're doing. We love you. Fuck Bye. the family business. You know, for a while we were selling stamps. Or, or no, no, we weren't selling stamps. We were buying stamps that had, you know, things that we could stamp on to dollar bills. Some weird phone losers thing. I think it's on the phone losers forums somewhere. There's pictures of us stamping dollar bills. I don't know what happened to that. It's probably a horrible idea to encourage people to do it, you know. I think the government um, told those wheresgeorge.com people to cut it out. But thanks, Crazy Calvin. I hope I get a listener and they're like, hey, I found your show from a dollar bill. That would be hilarious. Hey, I haven't called in like three years because I haven't had anything interesting to say, but oh, I had a nice. couple things. I wish everyone was like that. First. I read the book a couple months ago. Uh, thank you. You're um, welcome. Also, today, I was trying to go to thisisarecording.com, and it's, like, gone. Yeah, I know. I it don't know says, what happened. bye-bye, and then there's, like, a download link. And I think then, Jen's just taking a break from the Internet, because she took down her Twitter, and she took down something else, I guess both of her Twitters, and then that happened to her site. Who knows? I think she just needs some no-Internet time or something. The YouTube, I haven't heard anything. all that's gone, too. Yeah, the YouTube, that's what she took she down. she okay, or does she just, like, not do anything with the phone anymore? Does she have a better hobby? Yeah, she'll be back. I don't know. All right, bye. Jen can never leave us. Everyone keep visiting thisisrecording.com until it comes back. That's a website full of old telephone recording sounds. The biggest archive of them on the internet, probably. It'll be back eventually. Just keep checking. Hey, Brad. Just wanted to say that the best thing that you ever did with the show was to make it so the voicemails play at the end so everyone could skip the stupid ones like this one. That's right. You're welcome for that. Hey, Brad. It's Domingo the Cactus again. Hey. Uh, just letting you know, the other day I had the best day ever, okay? All right. I had the best day ever with my friend That's Heinrich. Nice. Heinrich. Okay? We, uh, yesterday, the best thing happened. I grew cactus out of my dick. Okay, that one was good. Uh, second, we went to uh, a country club, and uh, we we met a uh, carrot top, and we club. went skydiving with him, oh, and that yeah. was also good. You should have been there, man. You should have been there. Anyways, I have a joke for you. All right, what did the... Oh, God, we're breaking up. We're breaking up. We're breaking up. Oh, God, no. Oh, All right, Taxi. bye. Thanks for the voicemail. Hey, Brad, hopefully this is not a back-to-back -back phone call. Ooh. What? What? <laughs> What's happening? Oh, yeah. For some reason, I must have pressed my video button <laughs> so you could receive video calls. Uh, anyhow, oh, shit. I see you. So, uh, hey, yeah, hey, Greg. I, mean, I called you yesterday, hopefully calling you today. I see Other you. Other people called you, and hopefully this is not a dupe. But uh, everybody to go to Google Play Store on your Android, and there's a free app that's uh, PLA, dedicated to PLA. Uh, it's yep. called PLA Streamer. That's all in one word. Uh, no spaces. Yep, everyone go to the Android store, the Google Play store, and type in PLA Streamer, all one word, and it's an app, and you can stream something. Or you can look up Phone Losers sure what. Streaming. You want to look that up instead of typing in PLA Streamer, yep. and uh, that's for streaming. It's going to fill your phone with malware. It's going to use your phone to mine for bitcoins. And it's going to send all the money to Greg. Uh, press that button again. It's genius. Telling me that I can't video here, and I keep press, accidentally pressing that button. Uh, God damn the button. Anyhow. Quit face dialing uh, the button. Yeah. Look it up. Bye. Yeah, I'm just kidding about the malware, hopefully. But Greg has created an app in the App Store on Google Play. And I don't know what it streams. I guess it streams recent shows, or does it stream the Shoutcast station? What does it stream? It streams something. Something to do with PLA. I guess I should try that out on my phone, see what it does. Let you know if it empties out my bank account. I'll do that soon. Hey, Arby. Uh, I will keep it quick. All right. Uh, recently, you ended one of your up. shows with a song by a guy named Tyler Cassidy. Mm -hmm. He uh, also went by the name Froggy Fresh and Krispy Kreme. Oh, don't um, say Krispy Kreme. He has a You're going to get him sued again. Come on. He started going right now to try to get a new album going. You might want to mention it on one of your shows. 
Yeah. Uh, Maybe it's I will. on his channel somewhere. I think it's on the Froggy Fresh one or it's something. It's on his like YouTube. That, you may want to take a look it up and put it in the show notes. I will try to find that. Have a great day. Bye. Yeah, I think it must have been on a hobo sode. I played a Froggy Fresh song that I'd never heard before. It's from his brand new album. And I played his music on the show before. I've played that Halloween song quite a few times. And he posted a YouTube video recently of himself not in the Froggy Fresh character. I thought he was just a damn weirdo. Apparently not. And he's quitting the Froggy Fresh thing, I guess. Or that's what he says anyway. And he's going to try and do more serious music, like pop style music. And he's starting up a Kickstarter to uh, fund his new album. Apparently he needs like a billion dollars for that or something. I forget what it was, like 30000 maybe? Was it that much? Maybe it's just 8000 I don't know. I'm going to try and find that right now. I'll put a link to it in the show notes. If you like Froggy Fresh, I'm going to play one of his new songs from the new album as we end the show here. There's still a bunch of voicemails left, but I'm just kind of tired of voicemails. I don't want to play anymore. I'll just finish it up on the next show. So go look at the show notes. Find that Kickstarter for Froggy Fresh. And of course, support the PLA Kickstarter while you're there. Support the PLA one first and then support the Froggy Fresh Kickstarter. It has to be in that order. Here's a new song by Froggy Fresh. I downloaded this album from the link in his YouTube. It's a completely free album he's putting out. This one is called Prank Calls. It was going on 10, Friday the weekend. Me and Mac was up late, parents were sleeping. Up to no good, me and Mac was sneaking. Well, actually, you're not allowed to have any type of dance club in your apartment home.